Time now for, for the exchange where we want to use the significance of this anniversary to explore just how much progress the U.S. is making when it comes to race relations. Joining us live now from Atlanta is Bernice King, the daughter of Martin Luther King Jr. and the CEO of the King Center. Bernice, thank you so much for being with us. So you thank lost you, your Zane. father. Glad to be here. You lost your father to racial violence in the most brutal and public way possible. Your father's death brought about so much change in this country. Do you have faith that George Floyd's death will do the same? Oh, of course, I'm, I'm a woman of faith, so I certainly have faith uh, that there will be uh, some changes since uh, uh, the, the br brutal slaying of, of George Floyd, um, because I have seen so much um, organizing and uh, so much persistence um, in pursuing legislative change and in working in different jurisdictions across this nation by activists. Um, and so I, I believe that we will see change. It may not be at the level that some of us will hope, but I think we will make some progress. And yes. we have already started making a little bit of progress, certainly right. not at the level it needs to be. Right, and, and I talked about some of the reforms that we're seeing over the past year. Mm -hmm. What stuns me, especially as somebody who is, who is not American, is really the politicization of race in this country. When people see a video of um, a police shooting involving an unarmed black person, whether they are on the side of the police officer or on the side of the victim, who normally is black, does not depend on what actually happens. It depends on who they vote for. It depends on which political party they support. How do we undo that level of political division and this excessive politicization of race in this country? I mean, there, there has to be uh, some people who talk about it in different ways. Um, and we have to build momentum around that and humanize this. Uh, the, these are human rights issues. Uh, we are part of a greater humanity. Uh, and when someone is treated in this vein, we have to look at it as a part of our human family. Uh, and we have to teach more of that, especially to the younger generation. Um, you know, that's, that's why it's important um, that right now the discussion going on of critical race theory, no matter what we call it, we have got to raise uh, new generations of young people to understand uh, the systemic nature of racism in this country and how it is creating racialized outcomes. Um, and that we are part of a greater human family. And when we see issues like this, we have to address it from that vantage point and not from a blue or red vantage point, or not from a blue or red angle perspective, you know, a conservative or progressive perspective. Uh, these are human rights issues. These are human lives. And uh, people are to be treated with dignity no matter who they are. Right. Um, I watched an interview you did, I think it was about a year ago, with Ellen DeGeneres, where you said that there was a time period during which you had a lot of resentment towards white people. There are so many black people in this country, people of color, who have been traumatized by the sheer number, not mm -hmm. just in terms of George Floyd, but the sheer number of videos um, that we have to relive over and over again, seeing unarmed black men being shot by police. How did you get over that resentment towards, um, towards white people? Well, you know, it's a, it's a process. Um, first and foremost, I grew up in a family that emphasized unconditional love, forgiveness, um, and uh, service to humanity. So by having those teachings around me, although I went through those phases, they were able to bring me back when I had some experiences uh, that were different than what my mind was perceiving. And so I had a gentleman in, in the middle of an interview that I did um, about my father and the loss of my father. He was a white gentleman um, who said, can I give you a hug? Uh, and at the time it was, you know, during that phase where I really hated white people and, and especially white men. And I did it because I've been, you know, my mother taught me, you know, to respect uh, people. And so I allowed him to hug me in the middle of the show. Um, and it was one of the most genuine hugs I had ever received. Now, some people may think that's trite, but it did something to me internally. It broke uh, my tendency to do the broad stroke that all white people are a certain way and to really begin to look at uh, the humanity of people. 
um, and and to remember the teachings of of my father even that there's good in the uh, uh, worst of us and there's bad in the best of us uh, and so processing through that and then you know learning about more about my father's nonviolent philosophy and methodology and now being the head of the institution uh, has has really helped me do I not have moments though of being angry and upset of course um, but because I knew that I couldn't stay in this place of resentment and hate uh, because not only uh, was it uh, uh, not beneficial, personally, um, it was not helpful in terms of me being able to be in a constructive place um, to move the issue forward. And, and so that's part of you know my process, and I know everybody can't go through that uh, or may not go through that, but I do challenge people to understand what my father said, that hate and, and, and that's hate even for people who hurt you, um, even if it's reactionary because they did something bad to you, it's too uh, much of a burden to bear, that it affects your organs, it affects your system, and it's like, you know, drinking poison but expecting the other person to be harmed right, by it right, when it really right. harms you. You can be more effective by channeling those uh, emotions into constructive action, and that's what nonviolence is about and what we teach and train people in at the King Center in Atlanta. So you've, you've worked through those emotions, you've really worked to process it, especially with that, that hug that you got that you felt that was very genuine. Um, and re and rechanneling, and rechanneling, re and rechanneling, re which is very important. As hopeful as you are, Bernice, is America a racist society? Oh, and, indeed. I mean, uh, um, we, we have racist structures and systems. You know, what people have to understand is tomorrow we can change the players on the board. We can have, you know, 15 percent uh, Fortune 500 CEOs be black. You know, we can have police forces around this country uh, be majority black. But if we don't change the systems and structures, they'll just be carrying out a racist system. And so we have to attack white supremacy because it has affected all of us psychologically uh, through the years. Uh, and that's what this generation is about. This, it's about helping us to do that inward work of purging ourselves from those belief systems and structures that we have been living under for so long uh, and being able to now reimagine a new society that has new ways of engaging um, each other uh, that is not uh, 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 prejudiced by, you know, that white supremacist way of functioning and operating. There's still so much work to be done, but as you pointed out, um, progress has been made. And so let's cling to that hope. Um, I'm an optimistic person like you. Bernice King, Life for Us, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being on the program today.